This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholars. So today I'm going back and explaining something that I started explaining a while ago, and then you know people sent me questions, and I was teaching classes, and people kind of needed help with this and that, and so I kind of went off on other tangents, and I I didn't really explain. Uh, this concept to, to, to satisfaction, and, and I probably won't be able to, to, to explain to absolute satisfaction, uh, but uh, just because it is a little non-intuitive and a little difficult, uh, but I, I want to go ahead and try to pick that back up and actually, and, and um, excuse me, if I can, uh, explain the, the theory uh, behind explaining, or behind defining the, the uh, paramagnetic properties of oxygen, and and that theory, and I'd already talked about that, a little bit about the quantum mechanical models of, of atoms and, and, and how the, the electrons um, can be thought to inhabit orbitals, even though they don't really um, physically inhabit orbitals because their orbitals are just probabilistic um, probability functions. We, we can kind of model them as if they do inhabit these orbitals, and, and when we model them that way, uh, that gives us a little bit of insight as as to, uh, it gives us something to work with as far as bonding, and what that that theory the the, the current theory that we use to explain bonding um, quantum mechanically is something known as molecular orbital theory, or MO theory. So it's known as a molecular orbital, or MO we'll say molecular orbital theory. And what that basically what it explains is, is it says, well, what we do when we bond is we actually combine, we blend the wave functions of, um, of the individual atoms. Their wave functions will blend into one another. And um, when they do that, when the wave functions combine, we get a new orbital or basically a new wave function. Um, and we call that new wave function a molecular orbital. Now, remember that wave functions kind of have these wave-like uh, characteristics to them. Obviously, they're wave functions, and it's, so electrons kind of have these wave-like characteristics. And and waves can and can really do one of two things. Waves can constructively interfere, and they can destructively interfere. So. I can have a wave function that will constructively interfere, and when they constructively interfere, we get bonding. But when they destructively interfere with one another, we, we don't get bonding. And so not all wave functions can bond. Not all wave functions are necessarily compatible. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the very, the most basic uh, uh, the most basic uh, molecule I can think of that molecular orbital theory can, can dis describe, and that is di the dihydrogen molecule, or um, H2. Now again, Lewis theory, it, it describes this. The Lewis dot structure describes uh, this quite well, and, and really w uh, we look at using molecular orbital theory for uh, certain molecules that aren't well described by this, um, but I'm going to use molecular orbital theory to describe this simply because it's simpler to start out with something easy like this and then work your way up into something that's a, a, a f bit more complicated um, like oxygen. So what I have is, is I have a hydrogen molecule, or an atom rather, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a picture here. Okay, and on one side I'm going to have, hi I'm going to have a hydrogen atom here and another hydrogen atom here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those atoms together and eventually they'll, they'll combine to a molecule and that'll be represented in here. So let's just go ahead and look at the electronic structure of hydrogen and it's really easy. It's just 1s1 and then 1s1. Okay, so I have one electron in the 1s orbital. So I'm just going to go ahead and do um, an S here and an S here. Okay, so this is the 1S orbital. This is the 1S orbital. And I'll just put an electron here and an electron here. And we'll just say they're both spin up for now. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, now, when we combine them, 
when the wave functions uh, combine over here, I can get one of two different types of orbitals, what we call molecular orbitals. Um, I can get an um, 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 orbital of lower energy. So these are going to come down here and they're going to combine. And um, I'm going to have an orbital down here of lower energy. And I'm going to have an orbital up here of higher energy. Okay, so there, there are two different orbitals that are created when I combine the, 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 the 1s1 of the hydrogen here and the 1s1 of the hydrogen over here. When I combine those wave functions, I can get one of two things happen. Um, I can get high energy orbital and low energy. L low energy orbital. Where does nature normally like to be? Well, nature normally likes lower energies. Um, the lower energy, the better, the more stable, and, and we see that in our electron configurations. Uh, you, you can refresh if you need to on those videos that electrons fill from lowest energies to highest energies. Now the same is true with um, with molecular orbital theory that these electrons um, will fill from lower energy to higher energy um, orbitals, molecular orbitals now. So what's going to happen is um, I'm going to have an electron um, that will go in here it spin up and spin down. Okay, so now this is actually H2 here. Okay, this is an H by itself. This is an H by hydrogen by itself. This is actually H2 here. So spin up, spin down because I can fit two electrons in an orbital. Okay, now um, if I had more electrons, we may look at putting them up here. This is a special orbital because does this go against nature? Uh, yes, it does in, in the respect that electrons don't want to go up into this orbital here. Okay, Electrons would rather be in the lower energy orbital. Um, in the higher energy orbitals, they don't uh, particularly like to bond. There isn't really bonding that occurs in this, this orbital. And in fact, when we combine these wave functions, um, this lower energy orbital is what we call the bonding orbital the bonding orbital, and this orbital up here is called the anti-bonding. Anti-bonding. Um, simply because it's higher energy. Um, and now in, in the hydrogen atom, the bonding actually occurs along the z-axis. And that's what we call the nuclear axis. So the nucleus is here, and then another nucleus is here. And when I have bonding directly along that, what we call the z-axis, um, what we'll do is we'll call these a sigma um, orbitals, okay, a sigma and a sigma here, and when they don't occur along the z-axis, and I'll talk about those later on, we'll call those pi orbitals, but for now, these are sigma orbitals, and the anti-bonding orbital um, will often put a star above that or near it, uh, sigma star to, to identify that as an anti-bonding orbital. So looking at this, do you think that uh, with molecular orbital theory, would it um, predict that um, hydrogen and hydrogen would bond to create a, a hydrogen molecule? Well, the energy of the orbital, of the new orbital, the molecular orbital, is lower than the energies of the 1s orbitals of the individual atoms. And a lower energy state is always preferred, so absolutely molecular orbital theory predicts that hydrogen will bond. Um, and let's see if I have time to do this. There's actually a neat little thing that we can do um, to predict what, uh, what's known as the bond order, or how many bonds I'll have. Um, bond order, or how many different bonds. Is it going to be single bond, double, triple? What I do is I take the number of electrons in uh, bonding orbitals, bonding, subtract the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals, A, B, and I divide all that by 2. So let's see what happens with hydrogen with a bonding order. So I have 2 electrons in a bonding orbital, 2. I have 0 electrons in an antibonding orbital, subtract 0. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide all that by 2, and that's going to equal 1. So molecular orbital theory predicts one bond, and we know that the H2 molecule um, is only one covalent bond. So in fact, that is predicted uh, through molecular orbital theory.
Okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop there, and then I think on the next video I'll talk about helium, and we'll just keep it basic for now. Alright guys, take care.